Good morning and welcome to this week's uh, view on, on Africa. My name is Peter Fabricius and I'm a consultant uh, with the ISS here in Pretoria. I'm also a freelance journalist and I've been covering foreign policy including Africa for quite a long time. So today we're going to have a look at last uh, Tuesday's elections in, in Kenya uh, on the 8th for last Tuesday and um, we're, we're going to see if we can uh, we, we can get some sort of sense of what, what that meant for Kenya, for the region, and also for Africa. I attended that with quite a lot of journalists, South African, as well as, um, you know, obviously locals, other African, and uh, quite a lot of international interest. Um, the, the election was also very um, interesting to international observers, and, and so there, was, there were a lot of them on the ground too. So I'll give a brief presentation putting Kenya in its geographical and political context, I hope, and... Um, and, and what, and what uh, that impacts on the election and vice versa. I'll, I'll leave about 45 minutes afterwards for uh, discussion um, via the uh, chat function. So to put it into its political context, in an economic sense, I think one can call Kenya uh, an anchor state. It's the largest economy in the East African community by quite a long shot, it's 40% bigger than Tanzania, which is the next biggest. It's also a uh, more sophisticated economy than its neighbors um, and has a very interesting uh, potential in, for example, innovation and IT, where it's, it's, it's quite a leading country. Uh, it also appears to hold great potential because of its, its relative stability it, uh, politically um, and its geopolitical location. Um, you know, it, 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 it's the, the route to the sea for three of its neighboring countries, South Sudan, um, Uganda and uh, Ethiopia, or a route to the sea. There are two other neighbors, uh, Somalia, and as I said, Tanzania to the south. And one of the other uh, potentials that, that, again, one uses the word potential a lot in, rela in relation to Kenya, is that it's the touchdown point for the maritime road part of the, of the grand One Belt, One Road development initiative that China has recently launched, which is supposed to um, have huge potential. So that all adds to what Nairobi has to offer. And it's beginning to exploit this potential in the sense of building the Mombasa-Nairobi standard gauge railway, which will eventually link up to the rest of the region. Politically, it's also a bellwether state. I think it's fair to state. state. It's, been a, it's been a relatively stable country um, over the years since independence in 1963, and a relatively mature one. The democracy has by no means been perfect, though, um, with many allegations of rigging in this election and in past uh, ones. And Freedom House rates it as only partially free, mainly because of cronyism, um, election rigging, uh, corruption, and so on. Military, militarily, it could be called a frontline state in the war against Al-Shabaab, which uh, it uh, invaded southern Somalia to attack in 2011. And there was a heavy retaliation by uh, Al-Shabaab in the form of terror attacks in Kenya. So it's an interesting play, a state in many ways. So against this backdrop, let's have a look at the, um, the elections themselves, the history of elections. This was the 12th election in, in, the, in the history of uh, political history of Kenya since, 20, uh, since the uh, um, independence in 1963. And there's been a kind of evolution I think one can discern from a de facto one-party state to a, a de jure one-party state under Arab Moy. And then in, in, in 2002, a significant development, I think, uh, where the party of, of independence, Kainu, actually lost an election, which doesn't happen a lot in, in some of these countries, um, and uh, to an, an opposition uh, coalition led by uh, Y Kabaki, the Rainbow Coalition. However, in, in 2007, we, 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 by, when, by which time uh, Dinga, uh, um, the Rela Dinga, the son of one of, one of Kenyatta's uh, uh, lieutenants back in 63, broke away to form the ODM and contested the election. By most accounts, he won that election, but the, um, the Kabaki faction, uh, Kukuyu faction, refused to accept the result. That led to widespread violence in which about 1,200 people were killed. And uh, it led to jo uh, to Eru Kanyata, uh, the son of Jomo, and and uh, William Ruto, uh, being indicted by the ICC. Um, so now th that is the backdrop to these elections, and uh, it, it created some tensions, obviously, and and, and a big question um, about who you know which which 
result where we're likely to see this time, where we're likely to see 2007 and violence or 2013 and a relatively peaceful uh, outcome, although there had been some violence. Um, and um, another cause for concern was that, the, the, you know, this was still very much being done on a, on a tribal basis with the, um, the same kind of ethnic coalitions uh, opposing each other with Kenyatta um, bringing together the Kuku and the Kalenjin and uh, Odinga, the, Lu the Luo, the, the Luya and the Kamba and, you know, one or two others. But those are the main standoffs amongst the big ethnic groups. Um, and there was also suspicions about the independence of the Electoral Commission, which, which also added to the tension, which was quite palpable. You know, I was in Arusha at a seminar the day before, and a Kenyan woman who was participating as one of the organizers said she was dashing down to, to Nairobi uh, on the morning of the election to, to vote quickly and then head off to her, her village. And a lot of people were doing that. They didn't want to be in, in Nairobi or any of the big cities, really, and some of the other hot areas after five o'clock when the results um, started coming in. We're, we're, you know, and so Nairobi became something of a ghost town. We talked to many voters in, in lines, long lines, long patient and friendly lines. And one of them in downtown Nairobi, a woman called Florence, who identified herself on, of her own accord as a cuckoo, said, we are a peaceful people. Uh, and and, a, woman, and a, a guy behind her said, yes, but only until the election uh, results come in, which I th found was quite uh, indicative. Uh, the voting went quite smoothly. You know, they had this quite sophisticated electronic system, which went, it crashed in 2013, but this time it worked quite well. You know, it registered all voters according to their um, fingerprints and made sure that they hadn't voted twice and they properly registered. Uh, and there were six different categories to vote for, the presidential, the gubernatorial, i.e. the governors, of um, 47 uh, different um, counties, which had been created after the 2007 elections under the new constitution, plus the Senate, uh, plus uh, also um, members of the, uh, the, the county assemblies, and women's votes. And uh, these were all registered on like tablets, and those results were sent in for counting um, electronically. Importantly, though, as it, as it would turn out, they had also registered in the old-fashioned way on paper, pen and paper. So the results began trickling in in the evening of the election, um, and they showed that Kenyatta was going into an early lead, uh, which he was to stay at. The day after elections, uh, Odinga predictably cried foul again, as he had before. He said the IABC, the Inter Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission computers, had been hacked to give Ken Kenyatta a false victory. He also claimed that Chris Msando, he was a senior um, IABC official in charge of the ICT part of the Electoral Commission, had, had been tortured before he'd been murdered nine days before the election to extract from him the the, the passwords for the electronic uh, voting system so that could be hacked. The IABC investigated those charges, but it couldn't uh, find any evidence for it. But it agreed to verify all the, the voting by, by paper tally. Um, and then on, on the 11th, having done that, it had announced that, that uh, Kenyatta had won with 54.1% of the vote, Todinga's 44.94% of the vote. And Uber driver, Lua, muttered ominously to me after that, Kenyatta must stop forcing himself on us, we won't take it this time. The election observers, though, felt differently. There were several uh, election observers, both locally and internationally, and the international ones included the AU, the, U the UN, EGAD, the Carter Center, the EAC, Commerce, EU, and Commonwealth. In their interim reports, they all said they couldn't pronounce really on the hacking, but in any case, as John Kerry, who's the, the, the former US Secretary of State, um, who headed the Carter Center's commission said it didn't really matter because the, the, vote, the, the electronic vote would be verified by, by paper, tally. So Dinga now was left somewhat uh, adrift with no support from anywhere. Um, he still refused to, to uh, accept the results or to appeal them in the courts, which was rather ominous. But he didn't call, him, call them his supporters out onto the street either, which was an encouraging development. Uh, and ye yesterday, or it might even have been today, I'm not quite sure when the, ref the time the report referred to, but he was uh, threatening to announce a new strategy to contest the results. Protests did indeed break out across uh, Luo strongholds, you know, um, Odinga is a Luo, in Kasumu, right on the west, on the banks of, the, of Lake Victoria, and in, in some of the, um, 
the slums or informal settlements of Nairobi. About 24 people, according to uh, unconfirmed reports, were killed, mostly in clashes with police uh, who seemed to use excess uh, force. Uh, this, however, was better than the inter-travel inter clashes that occurred in 2007, uh, which, which spread you know, much bigger. So what, having looked at actually what, what happened, um, what do we make of it? Um, one th important thing to note is that Rela Adinga, the perennial also ran, seems to have reached the end of the road now. He and his Lua people, I'm sure, were cheated in 2007, but, you know, that's history and one can't turn back the clock. Uh, many election observers and Kenyans themselves believe that he fought an unduly negative campaign, stressing grievances of the past, rather than looking to the future, and so he lost a lot of support, especially amongst the youth who constituted a very large proportion of, um, of voters in this election. There's something like 5 million more voters than in 2013, which was quite demographically surprising. Um, and so Kenyans, it seemed, were looking for a more positive message, and Raylo just didn't provide it. So I, I, I regard him as tragic because he should have won in 2007. And what lessons can we learn otherwise from this election? Um, the first is that the Kenyan government didn't like the focus on the violence, obviously, and preferred, as, as one of my friends in the Department of Foreign Affairs said to me, that the importance of the election should be seen as a mechanism to strengthen democracy uh, and consolidate it. Former South African President Thabo Mbeki, who headed the African Union mission, uh, wholeheartedly agreed with the Kenyan government um, and, and, and actually presented the elections as, a, as an example for other African uh, uh, countries to follow. I wouldn't fully agree with that, though. Despite the mostly favorable verdicts of the election observers, there were clearly flaws. You know, one seasoned election observer from South Africa who's been to a number of these elections was quite astonished to... Um, to hear a, a senior Jubilee official, the Jubilee was, was um, Kenyatta's coalition, uh, telling him before the election that, yes, um, you know, there would be cheating. He said, the other side is, will cheat, and so we're going to have to cheat too. Now, the rather cynical conclusion that this observer drew from this was that probably the cheating in, in each other's strongholds, you know, balanced out, uh, and so in the, the end result was probably something approximating reality, which is not a very satisfactory conclusion. Um, also, Grant Masterson, who, Masterson, who's an observer from the Electoral Institute for Sustainable Democracy in South Africa, they observed many elections, and noted that perhaps the most popular position in this election would, was that of a member of the, um, of the uh, what do you call them, uh, county uh, election assemblies. You know, the, the, this was the, the level down one from the national level to which uh, power had been devolved under the 2010 constitution. And, and he, the, the reason he concluded this was popular was because they were, you know, people were following the money, polit politicians were following the money. A lot of the resources would be found there. And so in a sense, one could say um, that what, what, what the constitutional changes had done was not so much devolve power, but devolve co corruption to a lower level. In, in conclusion, then, what should we make of, of this election? Um, I, would give it, I would say we should give two cheers for democracy. There was a, 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 evidently quite a lot of rigging, but it seems not to have been on a scale that would have altered the result. Um, it was also unsatisfactory to me that it seems that the so-called Mount Kenya uh, Mafia, you know, the, the Kikuyu people close to, to Kenyatta from central Kenya, we're once again firmly in control and very happy to be, you know, we have the, the noses in the trough. Um, so, it, so it seems that the, the, that the conclusion should be that while this was not a, a shining example of democracy, there had been some evolution in, in, de, in, in, in democracy. Um, the, endem, the country's endemic corruption, though, as I mentioned earlier, seemed to be, uh, have been devolved to a lower level rather than eradicated, though perhaps it was diminishing. Its twin brother ethnicity is still present, as evidenced by the, the fact that these were, you know, basically tribal, you know, or ethnic coalitions were, which were contesting the result once again. So uh, the, the country was still finding it pos impossible to break out of it. Um, it's starting to fade, though. A lot of Kenyans assured me, with the youth in particular, becoming increasingly uh, inclined to vote on other grounds. Whether it will ever disappear from Kenyan democracy, though, is, uh, is, is hard to imagine. 
Still, Kenya is a lot better than many other countries that probably get far less critical attention. Um, and the reason for that, though, perhaps Kenya should take as a kind of backhanded compliment. What it suggests to me is that people expect more of Kenya. It's a country of great potential, and so they want it to succeed, and they pay more attention to try to uh, to monitor the possibility that it might do so. I'd, I'll conclude with one just quote from de Gaulle. You know, de Gaulle once was asked um, what he thought of someone's observation that Brazil uh, was the country of the future. De Gaulle's cynical observation, a retort to this was, yes, and it always will be. So our, our, the question here is, will Kenya evolve to become the country that it can be or will it always remain the country of the future?